What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, February 8th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Total Energies reports lower LNG earnings and sales. Interesting one there. Next up, oil market needs $14 trillion, according to the OPEC Secretary General. Absolutely unbelievable. Next up, the true cost of net zero are becoming impossible to hide. Then we'll go to analyzing the Mediterranean corridor, provisionally planned extension to Louvre. This is, you know, we, we, we love a good Club Med story. We know that for a fact. Oh, yeah. And then we'll finish up with U.S. natural gas consumption, establish a new day Daily record in January 2024. We talked about a little bit that last night on the Daily Show. Excited yep. to do that here. Then we will switch over, cover quickly what's going on in the oil against finance markets. We've got oil prices currently sitting, and 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 uh, you know we're we're here live at Nape, so I'm doing everything on my phone here. But oil is trading about 73.84 right now. Brent oil about 79 dollars. Um, and then the only other thing I saw in the markets today was we saw a merger. Uh, CRC California Resources Corporation nice. is going to acquire Era Energy in an all-stock transaction valued at about $1.2 billion. A little interesting note when we get into about who some of the beneficiaries of that is. So we'll cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. But for Michael Tanner, Stuart Turley, we're here live at NAEP. Good to see you in person again, and let's fire this off. Hey, let's get ready to rumble here. Uh, Total Energies, Michael, as we normally call them, re uh, reports lower LNG earnings and sales. And here's a little bit why on that, Michael. Uh, they said Wednesday that the company's integrated LNG business logged a decline in its adjusted net operating income due to lower prices. So it means their volumes was the same. Now, uh, compared to the $134 billion in the previous quarter, um, their net income rose 8% reflecting the evolution mm -hmm. of the prices so what has happened was a couple things that are not listed in this article is the le least lesser amount of natural gas being demanded in europe because the killing of the uh, industries mm -hmm. the industry manufacturing because of low cost energy has been shut down it's having a flattening effect on lng yeah. Oh, yeah. Second order of magnitude again. Yeah, it's it's what we like to talk about. You know, I mean, to give you guys an idea, you know, in Europe, you're still we're still trading it at over fourteen dollars per MMBTU, which is unbelievable. Right. And what what this article points out is that a that's a decline of over thirty one percent. I mean, yep. if we were getting those net backs here, everybody would be drilling natural gas. We're sitting in here at the place of deals. You'd see no oil. You'd see only no. gas prospects. Oh yeah, at, at um, uh, two dollars, you're not really getting real high on that. Now here's the problem, Michael, is those tankers are not mm -hmm. cheap. Those cha tankers, <laughs> and, not at all. And then you got to haul them over. And there are record orders for tankers around the world. Mm -hmm. Asia is going nuts for LNG. Yep. So uh, anyway, I thought this was a great article. Let's roll to the next one here, Michael. The true costs. There we go. It is. The true costs of net zero are becoming impossible to hide. Um, you know, it is becoming impossible to hide because the data is now surfacing. Mm -hmm. They have been hiding the data, Michael, for so long that they're even manipulating the data in the uh, Arctic on that it's now the hottest summer, uh, hottest year in history. Well, it's because they've manipulated the data yep. in order to do it. And it's kind of cool finding out how they're doing it now. Britain dumps another net zero uh, gimmick. The Wall Street uh, reports this. Uh, they use natural gas to fuel the cabinet sized broilers mm -hmm. that provide central heating and hot water, forcing them to dot electric heat pumps. <laughs> electric heat pumps, my book, don't work nearly as efficiently in the BTUs. Mm -hmm. uh, the British thermal, it's kind of ironic british thermal uh that uh it does not work nearly as high because you have uh either coal or wind and solar and it, it does not work so anyway i thought that was pretty funny the wind tax uh, i thought this was another one the biden wind mm -hmm. tax 
Uh, the U.S. manufacturers have yet to stand up to, I'm not going to use the word, all right, idiotic regulations. This is a quote out of the article. This is yep, uh, yeah, yeah. just, hey, Google, this is a quote out of the article. So Biden's schemes are unraveling. And uh, Bloomberg reports a 48% surge in cost uh, that wrecks his much needed wind farm power plans. 48% uh, cost on that. And so, oh, hey, uh, everybody, for our folks uh, watching out there, we have the R.T. Trevino. We do. He's the big dog over there at Pecos operating, and we love you, R.T. Thanks love for you. Thanks for stopping by, baby. Absolutely. All right. Well, and, well, and just, then the wind farms are even being canceled in New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's a great thing because they're killing all the right whales up there. And uh, well, it's going to come back to the East Coast continues to shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, and, I think and, a little higher than that. And they're going to end up like we all we keep saying they're going to end up back on Russian crude. Don't you worry. They oh, will yeah. end up on Russian crude. Right. Uh, I, I'm going to have something on that here in just a minute. Uh, and I think I might as well just give my two cents here. Um, uh, watch what happens shortly on Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson is yeah. going to be in. He's already interviewed Putin. So, you know, hey, we were teasing about that. Hey. You know, hey, my Putin imitation. And when when Tucker Carlson releases that there is going to be a huge backlash. Yep. They're already trying to ban. I believe you just said that they're trying to. Um, the EU, a, yeah, the EU is putting a travel ban on him on Tucker Carlson. Yeah, yeah. it's because the same he, one that you've got. Right. Uh, I don't blame them because, you know, I'm I'm going to go up to Schwab, you know, Charles Schwab and say, yep. hey, dude, you're a nut. Now, here's the thing. What you're going to find out is I think that Tucker Carlson is going to go ahead and expose that there was a deal. Mm -hmm. There was a ceasefire between Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. The Biden administration and the EU and it. Yep. They sent Boris Johnson down there to blow the deal up. Exactly. Now, here's what's going to happen. I think that people are going to say Putin's a bad guy, but he's not that bad guy. And so energy makes a difference. And mm -hmm. I think you're going to see an opening up within six months of people buying uh, uh, Russian. Uh, and that's not talked about. And I think you heard it here first, Michael, and I've got a few other things I'm working on to back that number up with. So um, anyway, uh, let's go to the natural gas uh, consumption established a new daily record in, in uh, the U.S. This is from our buddies over there at the EIA. Um, I think they finally got something right. Um, it, it's got to be a, a uh, election year. They needed some uh, some wins. What do you yeah. think? I, th th no, they do. And, and we touched on this a little bit on yesterday's show, specifically um, with their short-term energy outlook. But really baked into those numbers, is, as you show here, was an absolute crushing of the natural gas consumption record. Um, the, the, the largest, I'm trying to find it right here, in Jan you know, on uh, January 16, 2024, a record high of 141.5 billion yep. cubic feet of natural gas was consumed. And that's on a per day basis. Right. That's one day per day. And we're still down at two dollar mark. You know, it's pretty, pretty crazy. I don't get it. Um, well, because you also have to notice that we were we started as we talked a little bit about yesterday. We were about. 13% above the five-year natural gas storage average. So right. as we begin to move below that uh, uh, five, you know, right. five-week rolling average or five-year, I think it's a five-year rolling average, right. you're going to see prices hopefully not settle out a little bit. But I mean, if, if we look right now, I mean, I mean, we're we're at a dollar ninety six right now for spot Man. price of natural gas. And you know, those netbacks, you know, the Waha's got can't be much better. Yeah, uh, I had a joke, but uh, HR does not want me to yep. uh, jump in. Absolutely. On that. Uh, yeah, yeah, Thank HR. you, HR. Yeah, uh, Ixne on the joke. A eh? okay. Let's go to the next one. Analyzing the Mediterranean corridor's prov provisionally planned uh, extension to LVOV. Now, Michael, if we could have the uh, Miss Producer, if you could bring up the map. That map really shows a corridor of pipelines and natural gas coming out of Russia mm -hmm. 
and going through the Ukraine. And here's where this story is going to end up. And that goes back to my Tucker Carlson story that it is uh, going to gain precedence again because the war in Ukraine is going to end very soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zelensky's toast. Uh, He's going to be the fall guy for this. But if you can take a look at this map, you can see that Russian natural gas going right on through down to the Mm -hmm. uh, Strait of Gibraltar. Yeah, uh, that is an absolute gigantic swath. Swath? That's how we say that in Oklahoma. That's a swath all the way through there of low cost Mm -hmm. energy. And and so let's go through some of these numbers here. And it goes through the deputy chair of the Russian Security Council, Dmitry Medvi, uh, drew global attention to the Mediterranean's corridor, uh, provisionally planned extension to LVOV on his tweet. Uh, let's see what it says here. It says the point here is that it's not tracks to in the West and uh, they differ with it's that the business is a lot more uh, precedent than politicians people want business they want low-cost food and the farmers all across the eu my hats off to you guys we love the farmers yep. no farmers no food and i applaud you guys man have you seen the stuff they're throwing yeah, they're going crazy. It's app, it, but the hard part is it's actually tough to find. You can't Google it. You gotta go to you gotta go to your oh, alternative yeah. news sources like energynewsbeat.com to find out about this stuff. It's crazy. It it is absolutely nuts. And so let's go to our last story here. Oil market needs 14 trillion. OPEC Secretary General. Um, I trust OPEC more than the mm-hmm. IEA. Uh the IEA yeah. is much like the EIA. And on Old McDonald's farm, they had an E-I-E-I-O, I think. Okay, global market will require 14 trillion investments over the next 20 years if oil producing nations hope to be able to fulfill global energy demands through 4045. That is really critical, Michael, for mm-hmm. a couple reasons. Um you don't have to print money yep. in order to get those trillions because there is a return on investment. Mm-hmm. Now, the side effect of this is BlackRock and all of the other ESG funds have now started funding oil and gas. And now they're also allowing to fund coal. They realize around the world, it's okay to have a transition and the transition may require a few more years or decades. People are tired. Political people lose their jobs when people don't have low cost energy. No, absolutely. I mean, I think it's there's some interesting notes in this article here. They say India's oil demand is expected to double by 2045, up from 19 million barrels per day to over 38 million barrels per day. Um, And that's according to Prime Minister Modi. He said, um, based on this, India is going to be consistently growing its energy. We aim to increase our share of natural gas to 15 percent of primary energy consumption for up from six percent today. And by 2030, Modi mentions that refining capacity will be up to 100 or 450 MTPA, which is it's a big number. You hit a big, big point. Uh, Iran and Iraq are now selling huge amounts of oil. Yep. Russia is still selling huge amounts of oil. I believe the number of their increased capacity is I'm going to throw a number out a million barrels per day. Okay. Guess what's happening? It's the Russia oil and the Iraq oils coming to India. It's being refined and going back to Europe as diesel because Europe has hosed it down. So India is smart because the profits that they make yep. pay for lower energy costs for Indians. I think it's phenomenal for them. It's showing the West their hypocrisy that they have is actually costing the West consumers more. Go yeah. figure that one out. Well, it's as always the consumer is going to take it in the drive through. But as, as we agree, when OPEC comes out with forecasts, we listen. 
when the IEA comes out with forecasts, we go, hmm, let's go fact check. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you think that they would ever get banned on Twitter? OPEC? Yeah. Mm. No, Hamas is still on Twitter, so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, okay. I'm done. <laughs> I got nothing on that one. Man. All right. We'll go ahead and uh, and flip over to finance. Before we do that, guys, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. Um, as always, this show is sponsored by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do an outstanding job of making sure that website stays up to speed with everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. You can check out the description below in the podcast, see all the links to the podcast, all of the different um, uh, news sources that we went over here. You can find them, read them, uh, skip ahead, do all the timestamps, everything you need. Email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com. Check out our data news combo product, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. The best place for all your data news combo. Really pushing that hard in V2. A lot of cool stuff coming around the corner, guys. So just check us out again, www dot energy newsbeat.com well, you know, we're recording this about 145 so you know, markets are still open right now we've seen crude oil run a little bit it's up to 7383 main reason for that just mainly has to do with 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 what we saw the EIA come out and drop today and let me go ahead and just pull this up we did see a larger than uh average US fuel star drop uh a draw remember we were supposed to see about a 500,000 barrel draw according to the EIA what we went ahead and saw was a three, one point uh, or uh excuse me uh crude oil reserves uh uh were drawn down by 5.5 million wow. barrels so again the estimate yesterday 500,000 barrel draw we now see today 5.5 million and that only brought prices up to $73 we're only seeing about a percent rise on that we did see a larger than average U.S. gasoline stock pull at about 3.15 million barrels um, compared with analyst estimates of about 140,000 barrels according to our favorite people over at the EIA distillates fell by 3.2 million barrels compared to the estimate of 1 billion barrels that's really what's happening as we're talking about um Prices being buoyed. We did see refinery utilization shrink um, point a half a percentage point to 82.42. Um, and we're still seeing some of the effects of that deep freeze that happened about two weeks ago. U.S. Gulf Coast, we saw about 15% of its refining capacity still be uh, offline, which is really um, bringing down uh, utilization rates to the lowest level since September 2021, really during the middle of COVID right there. Wow. You know, the only about the only other thing I saw that was really interesting was we did see a, a, a merger this morning, um, Era Energy and uh, um, uh, Era Energy goes ahead and gets acquired by CRC Resources for a valuation of about $2.1 billion. And one thing I just find interesting, and I guess before I get into that, both these companies are California operators, and we've talked here on the show at nauseum about how it's becoming extremely hard to do business in in California, we saw Chevron in their earnings report write down the value of their earnings assets um, by over about $5 billion from a write down due to their Colorado or excuse me, California stuff. Um, but CRC, California Resources, they're two of the big players out there. Um, it's an all stock transition. What's funny is for, uh, one of the biggest investors and, you know, um, uh, Era Energy is 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 owned by two specific companies, IKAV, which is a large international private equity company. And the Canada Pension Plan Investment Fund, owning a cool 49% of that. So interesting. And oh. What's also interesting is that they took stock. They didn't take cash. Now, this stock gives them more liquidity because you can you, you, you know, you can right. use that stock as collateral and start getting out loans against it. But it's interesting that they didn't go for an all stock. They, they didn't look for a deal specifically with cash, you know, considering what the Trudeau administration right. is attempting to do there, which is divest of everything from oil and gas. So it's right. clear the Canada Pensions Fund, they're still all for oil and gas. Oh, yeah. Uh, they like money. And exactly. You you want to survive? Uh, wasn't that the Terminator? If you want to live, you will come with me. Yep, ab okay. absolutely. To give you guys an idea, um, uh, the um, I I'm trying to think here. What is it? No, that's the IKV. They IKV's doing about um 31 billion of net assets, so they're becoming that they're the 51 percent owner there. Um, I think the other thing that was interesting to see is here's the here's a uh, uh, Bill Rogers. He's the managing director and global head of Sustainable Energies. He went. He goes ahead and says this. This transaction provides CCB investments and excellent 
excellent opportunity to scale up our investment in California's energy transition with Era Energy and CRC both aligned to continue to enable new carbon management solutions, each bringing complementary strengths to the table. So they've got to obviously come out and say, no, 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 no. We did this for renewable energy right. reasons, but let, let's be very clear here. It's right. going to be oil and gas is going to continue to rule the day there. Yes. You got to make money to spend money. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're live here at NAPE. It's about 145. We've had an excellent day here on Wednesday. We're oh, recording man. this Wednesday here. You guys are listening to this on Thursday. We're getting up. We're gearing up. We got to be ready to go tomorrow. It's going to be a busy day. Oh, huge day. We've still got lots of people to interview today. Yep. And it is nutty out there. Say, hey, stay safe. We'll see you next time. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else people should be concerned about? Uh, watch for Tucker's interview dropping on yep. and that because the second order of magnitude effects of that single interview, and the third and the fourth and the third and the fourth, uh, the Biden administration is trying to shut it down. Uh, the EU is already yep. trying to shut it down. And what you're going to hear out of that is that you're going to see an end Tucker, in my opinion, is going to be able to end the war because people are going to realize that Putin, I'm not going to say if he's a good guy or not, he's not as bad as he was because of the child trafficking that is becoming documented, the 30 plus weapons labs that the U.S. had in Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine is a crime scene. Yeah. And I'm glad it's finally coming to light. Yep. No, let's, I, let's end that. Um crime scene yeah no it's gonna be very interesting to see what tucker comes out that's kind of the, the talk of the town right now but with that guys we appreciate you for checking us out have a great week you will see our weekly recap drop on friday or excuse me we got interviews dropping friday weekly yep. recaps coming on saturday right we have lots of interviews. Yeah, you guys are about to be inundated with interviews, so get ready for all the people. We saw George P. Bush this morning, who's right. running for Texas Attorney General. Right. Um, we, we 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 talked with the TCU Energy um, right. administrators. Right. And we've got just a host of other stuff. Doug we Sandridge is Doug. coming up, Doug's. and then yeah, I mean, he is one cool cat. Absolutely, Car Ingram. Everybody was here, so it's going to be awesome. But with that, guys, we'll let you go for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you next week, guys.